In a system of debt, one of the two parties is always the slave. Off the charts, insane, revolutionary, the new money, a new era, decentralization, lightning fast, secure, private, impenetrable, useless, experimental, volatile, speculative and abstract. It's seen as being no different than government-issued currency, allowing criminals and terrorists to fund activities impossible to confiscate and bringing a low risk of inflation with cryptocurrency. It's a basket of mixed emotions at the moment. Cryptocurrencies are still an enigma to most people. A rare few understand them, how they work, how they can benefit and harm, and how to scale them if possible. Few people know, but cryptocurrencies emerged as a side product of another invention. Satoshi Nakamoto, the unknown inventor of Bitcoin, the first and still most important cryptocurrency, never intended to invent a currency. What if a technological innovation allowed anyone in the world to be their own bank? To create a currency free from taxes and banking fees? In his announcement of Bitcoin in late 2008, Satoshi said he developed a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. His goal was to invent something. Here's a quote. Announcing the first release of Bitcoin, a new electronic cash system that uses a peer-to-peer -peer network to prevent double spending. It's completely decentralized with no server or central authority. That's Satoshi Nakamoto on January 9, 2009, announcing Bitcoin on SourceForge. The single most important part of Satoshi's invention was that he found a way to build a decentralized digital cash system. There were many attempts to create digital money in the 90s, but they all failed. Here's another quote. After more than a decade of failed, trusted third-party based systems, DigiCash, etc., they see it as a lost cause. I hope they can make the distinction that it is the first time I know of that we're trying a non-trust based system. That's Satoshi Nakamoto in an email to Dustin Trammell. This decision became the birth of cryptocurrency. They're the missing piece Satoshi found to realize digital cash. His major innovation was achieving consensus without a central authority. Let's take away all the noise around cryptocurrencies and simplify it to a short definition. Cryptocurrencies are a limited number of entries in a database that no one can change without fulfilling specific conditions. Take the money in your bank account, for example. Is it anything more than entries in a database that can only be changed under specific conditions? Bitcoin and things like it is the equivalent of the red pill. Okay? We are entering a completely world of uncharted water. Have right you now. made any investments in Bitcoin? So, I mean, I personally, I own Bitcoin in my hedge fund. I own Bitcoin in my fund. I own Bitcoin in my private account. Uh, it is a huge deal. Fiat currency isn't money because it has no value of its own. In our world, paper is extremely cheap to produce. So other than the government printing a number on a bill and giving it purchasing power, the paper itself is close to useless. How would you describe the sense of security in the digital world in 2017? How would I describe the sense of security? Well, we have none. There is no security whatsoever. You can wipe your ass with it, sure, but that's about it. The power of it is in the fact that the network of people who use it is large. The weakness of it comes from issuing more and more of it. A cryptocurrency can be developed and designed with a limited and finite number of entities. Now in a 
I want to see if I can buy some. At first, I wanted to buy some. When I noticed Bitcoin for the first time, I realized that it's so incredibly useful as money that people are going to start using it more and more. But overall, we can create an infinite number of such entities by creating more cryptocurrencies. On the other hand, each government only issues one currency. There are now more than 800 cryptocurrencies in the market besides Bitcoin, collectively known as altcoins. The vast majority are useless scams created solely to pump and dump, trying to cash in on the crypto hype. 42 different types of coins have a market value topping $100 million, and 9 coins top the 500 million threshold, making them very legitimate and liquid. Go to wealthresearchgroup.com forward slash list for a detailed and quick description of the top 20 coins today, along with a simple explanation of what makes each unique. That's wealthresearchgroup.com forward slash list. Bitcoin is a system based on mathematical truths, and these mathematical truths stand alone. We can read the source code in Bitcoin and understand it, and it will be true whether Satoshi Nakamoto is a man, a woman, a collection of individuals, a government agency, or aliens from the future. So who is Satoshi Nakamoto? Satoshi Nakamoto is considered the most enigmatic character in cryptocurrency. To date, it is unclear if he or she is a single person or name used by a group. What is known is that he, she or they published a paper in 2008 that jump-started the development of cryptocurrency. The paper, Bitcoin, a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system, described the use of a peer-to-peer -peer network as a solution to the problem of double spending. With digital currency, there is a risk that the holder could make a copy of the digital token and send it to a merchant or another party while retaining the original. Today, the combined computing power of this global network is greater than the 500 biggest supercomputers combined, times 10,000. And because every transaction is verified and recorded by the network, a Bitcoin cannot be forged. Digital currency cannot be debased with cheap metals or printed by the billion at will. Too much currency can unleash a monster. Skyrocketing prices, trillion dollar bills that can't buy a loaf of bread. The problem that a digital currency or token can be used in more than one transaction is not found in physical currencies since a physical bill or coin can only exist in one place at a time. Since the digital currency does not exist in the physical space, using it in a transaction does not remove it from someone else's possession immediately. Banks can efficiently handle transactions without adding significant risks. However, this trust-based model still results in uncertainty. Removing the third party could only be accomplished by building cryptography into transactions. Satoshi Nakamoto was involved in the early days of Bitcoin, working on the first version of the software in 2009. Communication to and from him was conducted electronically, and the lack of personal and background details meant that it was impossible to find out his actual identity. Nakamoto's involvement with Bitcoin tapered off in 2011. The inability to put a face to the name has led to significant speculation as to his identity, especially as cryptocurrencies increase in number, popularity, and authority. While his identity has not been uncovered, it is estimated that the value of Bitcoins under his control may have exceeded $1 billion all the way back in 2013. Today, governments create currency by first creating bonds or treasury bills. These bonds are sold in the market, generating funds for the government that issued them. Large banks buy U.S. bonds to flip them, selling them to the Federal Reserve at a profit. This is the magic money machine. You see, the Fed is America's central bank, but it doesn't have any money. No cash on its balance sheets. When a bank buys a bond and takes it to the Federal Reserve, the Fed simply says, Thank you, Mr. Banker. Here's the principal and some profit. New money isn't exchanged. It simply appears on the bank's accounts. Magic. 
For 100 years and counting, the precise mechanisms of these bond purchases have remained a secret. Here's where it gets really interesting. The Federal Reserve is not a government agency. It's a private entity and its shareholders are banks which earn a dividend. As much as $80 billion per year total are paid out to some of the very same banks that sell the government debt to the Fed. Which banks? Don't even bother asking. That's also a secret. In other words, the magic money machine answers to no one. What is the blockchain technology then? By allowing digital information to be distributed but not copied, blockchain technology created the backbone of a new type of internet. Whether or not Bitcoin will be worth millions isn't the main question for many computer scientists, investors and hackers. To them, Satoshi Nakamoto's real invention is the blockchain technology. The blockchain is an incorruptible digital ledger of economic transactions that can be programmed to record not just financial transactions, but virtually everything of value. Information held on a blockchain exists as a shared and continuously reconciled database. This is obviously beneficial. The blockchain database isn't stored in any single location, meaning the record it keeps are truly public and easily verifiable. No centralized version exists for a hacker to corrupt. Hosted by millions of computers simultaneously, its data is accessible to anyone on the internet. Think of this analogy. Think about how we are sharing documents by sending a Microsoft Word document to another recipient and asking them to make revisions to it. The problem with that scenario is that you need to wait until receiving a return copy before you can see or make other changes because you are locked out of the editing until the other person is done with it. That's how databases work today. That's how banks work with our money. With Google Docs, for example, both parties have access to the same document at the same time, and the single version of that document is always visible to both of them. Now, because this technology is so brand new and cryptocurrencies operate outside the realm of governments, they've had to issue, release, and publish guidelines regarding them. In other words, as popularity continues growing, governments will have to step in and formalize this new financial sector, covering things like taxes, caps on amounts one can hold, allowing funds to be frozen over alleged terrorist attacks by temporarily or permanently shutting down exchanges, etc. There's no end to this. There are threats on the horizon. The bottom line is this. If millions are using a system and it gets hacked, there's a bug, an exchange shuts down, or the internet has a glitch. This becomes a gray area because unlike our other form of abstract payment system, which is regulated by government, this one is totally decentralized with no authority governing it. In the coming months and in the next few years, major challenges will arise for this sector and we must be prepared to the best of our ability to tackle these challenges. Go to wealthresearchgroup.com forward slash problem for an exclusive report on the major problems facing Bitcoin and the cryptocurrency ecosystem, including how to make sure you aren't breaking any tax laws by owning cryptocurrencies, how to secure your assets, and where you can easily stay updated. That's wealthresearchgroup.com forward slash problem. Lastly, and I think this is incredibly exciting, cryptocurrencies have created a class of new professions, such as miners. Principally, everybody can be a miner, since a decentralized network has no authority to delegate this task, a cryptocurrency needs some kind of mechanism to prevent one ruling party from abusing it. Imagine someone creates thousands of fears and spreads forged transactions. This system would break immediately. Satoshi Nakamoto set the rule that the miners need to invest some work of their own computers to qualify for this task. In fact, they have to find a hash, a product of a cryptographic function that connects the new block with its predecessor. This is called the proof-of-work system. Bitcoins can only be created 
if miners solve a cryptographic puzzle, since the difficulty of this puzzle increases with the amount of computer power miners as a whole invest, there is only a specific amount of cryptocurrency coins that can be created in a given amount of time. If all bank customers demanded just 3% of their deposits right now in cash, this run on the banks would reveal the truth. Almost none of that paper currency you think is in your bank account exists. It never did. Hedge funds are creating funds that are focusing on ICOs, which are initial coin offerings. This is how new enterprises raise money for projects in this space, and ETFs are being proposed as well. Publicly traded companies are being launched that deal with all the aspects of cryptocurrency and blockchain technology and the potential profit with an industry that is growing so rapidly is enormous. Go to wealthresearchgroup.com forward slash opportunity for a top-notch boil down of the five sectors you can invest in right now that are seeing immense growth, including specific ideas. That's wealthresearchgroup.com forward slash opportunity. The future of financial technology is here.